Praise the Lord. This meeting is being recorded. That was a great song choice. I have one maybe we'll play later. Sing it, Pastor. Sing it. <laughs> You've been so good. You've been yes. so good. So many things you've done for me. So good. Yes. So yes. many ways that you bless me, Lord. You're so good. Yes. You yes, made Lord. way for me. Yes, Yes. I give you all the praise. Yes. 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 So Thank you, Jesus. But I didn't see a way you made a way. Oh, oh good. Oh, wow. You're so good. Oh, no. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he's been so, so good. good. Been so yes, good. Lord, you've been. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, you you've been better than good. Oh, yes. yes. You've been better than good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. you've been so good. Hallelujah. Yes, so good. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. That's the special part. So good. Yes. Oh, Lord, you oh. made me. Yes, so yes, good. Oh, yes. You yes. made me. Yes, God. Right so you yes, made God. the way out of no Always. Way. Oh, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord. yes, yes God. God. Always. Always. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes,
who believe in him. He is our power. He is our strength. He is, I'll say it again. He is our redeemer. He is our resurrection. Hallelujah. So we have, like was mentioned, we have to rise up to our resurrection. That's not what I came to say, but that was one of the thoughts. We have to rise up. Come yes, on now. God. We just had certainly resurrection Sunday. This is a new, this is a new beginning every day. Hallelujah. Yes, Man. every day. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It's so easy to get to see so much going on in the world. They're talking about, we heard that in the, when the coming is near and time is winding up, that there will be rumors of this and, and all kind of travesties and all kind of things that are taking place in the world. This is not, I have a, a direction that the Lord gave me to go, but I just have to, to, to go with what, what I'm feeling because he's so good. He's so good to us. Even when we can't be where we want to be or when we can't see what we're supposed to see. God still makes a way and provision for us to be in a place that gives us the resurrected power that we walk with, that we live with, that we be being believers we have. So many people don't have that. Even the people that we gain a reflection or education from or a way to reflect from the Bible don't even have the power that we have. And he's been so good through so many things. I'm just giving him praise right now. Somebody else can say amen too, because I know he's bringing us through. I just got a call today from the brother I asked for the church to pray for. I, I asked him to come on tonight. I text him. I said, hey, man, I, I felt to ask you earlier. I texted him about an hour ago. I said, man, you want to come on and give your testimony? The brother was, was trying to, he, man, I'm going to tell you how good. He's so good. And this is what he said. I was thinking it was going a whole different way, but the prayers that you prayed, that the church prayed, that you asked them to pray. He said, Sam, that's what he called me. He said, Sam, he said, I just want to let you know that I am in a direction of remission and that I, I've become a candidate for, for everything that, that I thought I wouldn't have access to. They're giving me access to this, to, to clean out everything and get, get what they thought was going to be a detriment to me. It completely turned around. He thought he was on his way out of here. He was trying to get to his kids and his family. You know what I mean? And we prayed and it just began to talk, come, come. The doctors came in talking a whole different story. The guy was ready to run out of the hospital with the colostomy bag in him and, and go get to his kids if he was gonna go. This is the conversation we had. And we're just talking about how good God is. Even for those that don't have the faith or trust as much as we do, like like was said by by uh, Deacon and Sheree, if I have to use my faith and believe for you, it's kind of what I told him. I said, but I'm going to ask the saints to pray for you, bro. And he knows God. He grew up in church. He, you know, he he went away, he came back, and he, and maybe this was what God needed to get him to look up and recognize that truly, if he he said, if if it's God's will that I go, Sam, he said, I'll go, but I don't. I don't feel like it is. I said, well, stick to that. And I said, speak life into your life, into this situation. Bro, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters tonight, that the man called me today. He said, I'm, they, they told me that it is shrinking. I am headed towards the direction of, of remission. Amen. Why? Maybe God took him that direction because he recognized his, his, his experience up until now to where he had to get back and look up and say, either way, I'll be, I'll be satisfied. I just want God to know my heart. And he Amen. said, and that, he said, I'll believe it and trust that he will make it so I can, I can still be here. I want, I, I believe he has something for, for me to do is what he shared with me. I said, well, if you believe that, I'm gonna believe it with you. Cause I believe that your testimony and everything that you've been through to get you to where you are, to where you, maybe this is what, that's what I, my words I told him. I said, maybe this is what God had to use to get you to look up, bro. So much can be coming so many different directions. And you can be feeling so elevated in, in what you're accomplishing that you forget to look up. You're so focused this way on, on getting to it that you forget to look up and give thanks for how you're getting it or how, how God's supplying the need for you to even say, man, I feel great. I feel, I feel successful. But who gives that? God. Our Heavenly Father. That's who gives it. 
He gives himself, he said, he said, he won't give us in the mind. I was talking to my sister Grace today. She said, Daddy used to tell me God wouldn't give us more than, than, than what we can bear or deal with. And I said, you're absolutely right. And when I told her, I said, I said, clap your hands three times. I said, and rub them together real good. Some used to say, when you want to get, when you want to get something moving, it ain't no Mr. Miyagi. I don't want nobody to think I'm doing karate kid. This is what Bishop told me. He said, clap your hands three times and rub them together and focus on what you need God to do. And this is what I told my sister a few weeks ago when, 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 uh, when, when, uh, I guess it would be, uh, well, her uh, nephew, my, my, my cousin's, my nephew's son that I asked the church to pray for. They Swiss cheesed his house. I'm just giving some testimony real quick because it's about what God is in. And he's been so good. So good. Excuse me. I'm back. Listen, I told her, I said, rub, rub your hands three times and rub them together and focus on what you need God to do. And he said, this is something somebody should, should practice this week or the rest of the week. If something comes up, just clap your hands three times. She went, she had to go from Jamestown, New York to Rochester. They Swiss cheese the boy's house. He was in ICU, critical condition. And guess what? She went to the hospital. She said it was the hardest thing, one of the hardest things I ever had to do seeing him like that. This is her, her son's son, her grandbaby. She, she said, Sammy, I walked in that, that hospital room and I did, I, I was doing it the whole way because her friend drove her because she was, you know, a little distraught. And she said, well, I was doing it the whole way there. When I got there, I laid my hands on her. And we talked about God being so good. <laughs> the boy came out of ICU. The doctors were thinking about having to do three different surgeries. Listen to this. Tell me how good God is. <laughs> Man, she, he, the doctor came back. <laughs> He said, you know what? He said, we did it. We did another, I think it's an MRI, whatever they do to scan where the bullets are and everything like that. She, he said, we think we can leave them in and do a surgery later to, to help his body recover enough to where we can leave them in and not have to, to do surgery while he's in a trauma state. And the boy is out of the hospital. He only got hit two times. When when I say they switched cheese the house, that's they had they had a reason. They thought they had a reason. It was a mis you know, it wasn't all his fault, but you know how things happen. I, I can't really speak on what was and what isn't, but I'm just giving a testimony that he is at home with his grandmother and his other family members. So sometimes God, God is good, not sometimes, all the time he's good. Amen. Can somebody say that? Uh, I'm, I'm just giving praise for the, for the praise that I've been getting. And it's working. So yes. if you choose life and you choose the path of, of righteousness and you use the power that you've been given, Amen. then guess what? The Lord becomes our strength. And for him, even in that state, he became the boy's shield to have to go through more trauma through having three or four surgeries that they deemed. Yes necessary yes. after we pray this is the power and he said he'll be our shield and buckler he'll be our he'll be our deliverer yes oh yes somebody, somebody almost clipped me the other day when i was driving my car god shielded it he was able to move and not rear end me so i mean the little things i tell people lately when i've been talking i'm like you know what I said, it's the little things that, that add up so much. And sometimes so many little things can happen that God does that we can, we can not that we need to keep count, but we should keep a record of, of what, how good, the goodness that he does, the goodness, that, the goodness that he allows us to walk with in a way to give us the power and to become our shield. It's not just because the, blessed pray, the breastplate of righteousness is, is, is our shield. It's because he fortifies the strength uh -huh. of us, and it becomes our shield. It protects us from the darts that the enemy that the enemy tries to show. It's not an imminent thing because God God is forever. This is not a sojourn situation. This ain't a temporary thing. This is an everyday, continuous, 
uh, 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 progression into the power that comes through our praise. Oh my goodness, come on now. Look at this. If, if, if he went to the cross for us and he's given us the gift of the Holy Ghost and we walk with the power that, can, that, that has done miracle upon miraculousness, then what can't we speak or think in our spiritual mind that God will not reveal to his people? Somebody say, what are you talking about? If you go to Psalms 28 and you, you read verse seven, and there's a lot that comes before that because you cry unto thee will I cry, Lord, my rock, be not silent to me. So we're looking, we're looking for an answer. And so many things can take us away from actually hearing the answer. But in verse seven, it stuck out to me in a way to where it says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. And I am helped, therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. And with my song, like we just heard, that, that brought a praise, will I praise him? Oh, that's good. We can imagine, because I had a whole nother song that has a whole nother adaptation, but it's the same thing. But that song, see how if I rejoice in my song, then I, I, I met a gentleman who makes like all, almost ancient, a uh, uh, 100-year-old uh, 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 method for violin and cello bows. <laughs> Guys from Singapore, I met him, we were talking, and he knows this, uh, this technique to where the bow is a little bit thicker than normal. So it brings, even though it's a violin, it can reach because of the thickness and how it's textured. See what I'm saying? How, how much goes in to the, the thickness and the texture to bring the sound out of a, of a bigger string instrument just by the bow being the, the design that it is. See, sometimes when we go through things, we build up we build up a level of, of thickness. Our breastplate of rice is built up in thickness. So, and after a while, it becomes more of a protector, it becomes more power. It becomes something that brings its own tone when we allow our song to come out or when we allow our praise to come forth. Think about it like this. If I rejoice in the Lord, then what, what am I, am I rejuvenating my spirit by rejoicing in the song? Because he also told me in, in the midst of our conversation, and this, he just came, went, he was here, he just went to Alaska for a conference. And, you know, he's, you know, <laughs> he said, he said, lately, he goes, I was thinking, I was telling him, I said, you know, bro, I said, I've been thinking about all the songs that I grew up singing that we used to sing around Easter. And this is this is speaking to the song because I've had this song in my spirit since last week, and it's been just been ringing, ringing, ringing. And I listened to a whole bunch of stuff that you can imagine. But the the, the song that I was just man, he said, you and I said I I sang it. I was in part of my apartment, and it has the most amazing reverb you can imagine. And sometimes I'll just go in there and just blast this song you know, out of my chest, out of my, that comes from out of my, my rejoicing. And I, and I told him, he said, I said, it sounds so different acapella. He said, you know what acapella means? In, and I forget the language, but the, the, what it means is next to the chapel, next to the sanctuary, next to where you can get close to God. You understand? So as we rejoice and we sing praises unto God, even in just the acapella that just happened after the song played with no instrument, it began to, to, to rejoice. We began to rejoice. And with my song, will I praise him? With my rejoicing, I rejuvenate myself. Yeah. I, I, I add more anointing through allowing the praise to flow in such a way that it can be reverence unto God. It can be respected and given in a way that God rests. Well, wait a minute. You praising me like that? I got to I got to I got to take, take vent. And I keep going back to God is, and the heavens are listening to us in a way that I 
that I think we need to be reminded of. Because as we speak resurrection power into our situations, and my friend thought he was facing a death sentence. He was. They said, it's this, this, that, that, and it just didn't look good. He called me, he was like, man. And then he, one of the, he talked to him, spoke to one of my other friends. My friend called me, he's crying. I'm like, no, nah, man. I said, you gotta, you gotta sap that up, bro. We about to pray, man. I'm asked the church to pray. Answer. Yes, God. You know why I think God answered God, God answered that prayer? He said, Sam, I'm in remission. Everything is going a positive direction, bro. And last week they said something completely different. When I asked to pray, I was almost in tears because he's a good brother. You know, he has a heart for the Lord. He's just, you know, he may not be, you can't, you can't really measure where he's at based on not knowing because I can't judge him with the smite in my eye to look at him to say where his relationship is in God. But I can say this, his situation caused him to look to God in a way that he hasn't in a long time. I'll just say that. The Lord is, is, is their strength and he is saving strength of his anointing. So if he's saving it and he replenishes us, Oh man, come on, <laughs> come on now. Think about that. We have so much stored up. If he's storing it and he's holding it, come on. Then, then he's looking for ways to add more. If, they, if somebody can grab a hold of that. He said, how did you get all that from that one verse? Because he's so good. We just heard the songs, it's the songs you say. So many doors you have opened. So many ways you have blessed me. So many things <laughs> you helped me with. You've been better than good. God has been better than good. Somebody say he's better than good. He's better than good. And, and if it and if it's you know I I heard I hear I heard the old saying if it's better than good then it can only become greater. It can only get greater. Come on, somebody. Yes. Somebody say, yeah, shine your light. I'm going to shine my light. I'm just excited. Yes. Oh, my heck yeah. I'm going to shine my light. Just as much as, as everybody else needed Bible study tonight, I needed Bible study tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, yes, Jesus. I give, him, I give him praise and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I mean, better than good. Trust me when I tell you, he's been better than good, not only just to me, but for all of you gathered here tonight and everybody that's that's attached to us in any kind of way, he's been better than good. Shh, come on now. Where are we going? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord. Can somebody just give him some praise? Hallelujah. Can we just get some wave off of the prayer you at right now? Thank you, Jesus. I pray it connects. I pray. I pray the anointing. Hallelujah. That Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Trust Bless me. His name. Hallelujah. I'm feeling it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in him. That's Hallelujah. what I said. Yes. Thank I you, Jesus. Where I am to send it, and I'm, I'm, I'm sending it. Trust me. Don't think I'm not on my face. Trust me, don't think I'm not in the mountain praying and, and sending it your way, because guess what? If I don't, then I will be in the will of God. And I, I can't have that. Not me. I, it's, my, it's my duty. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. And, and, and in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. My, and the, but first, let me read my, my, uh, the first uh, verse that, you know, that establishes the rest of the chapter. And then you know, you look at what, how it flows through and what God is saying. He said, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. That's what I'm saying. It's a commandment. It's not something that you just inherit. You know, you just, just flaw it in that kind of way. There's no glory in that. Not only for me, but nobody else involved. So what does that do? I have to keep my eyes focused and away from evil uh, and away from things that, that, that is not of God. So I can, I can stay focused and send it. And wait till I get wait till wait till God allows allows what's gonna happen to happen. And it's in the midst of happening. Somebody say it's in the midst of happening right now. Thank you, it's Jesus. It's in the midst it's of, in the midst of right happening now. right now. How y'all she get a boy. You have 
Right. Everything that you're believing for is in the midst of happening. Somebody say it's happening. It's happening. It's yes. happening. Yeah, that's it. And then he said, if I don't forget his commandments, listen, for the length of thy days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. I add to thee. Will God add to thee? Add to me. Add to you. Thank you, Jesus. But my point yeah. is going, yeah. going to trust my trust and my belief in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. So sometimes when I don't understand fully what he wants me to say or what he wants me to do or what he, how he wants me to move or what he wants me to believe for somebody that asks me for a prayer. Even if you don't ask, I'm still praying. But if you ask, oh my goodness, I'm gonna focus on it so so good that it's, it, it can only manifest because if we believe together, then it only adds. So if I have 10,000 in my right hand, how many do we have? How many people is online tonight? And we could put 10,000 in flight? Think about that. That's why I say, if we know and we add a weekly, like a weekly thing to actually praying and, and believing for each other, like instead of doing, I mean, I know the prayer requests are important, but what are you believing God for a prayer request? What are you believing God for? And we add that, and we know who we're praying for, what they have, what their petitions are. Come on, man. Come on. I just believe that in that trust and in that anointing, God will, if we put our angels to work, then it will begin to work. Look, we did it, and all we did was put the prayer request up, and somebody believed and took action with the faith that was presented to the heavens and to the angels to take flight, to go on these. So if we choose life and use the words and the power we've been given to speak, things into existence or those they are at the, or as they can be, then my trust and my belief feeds the faith, which is the substance to what God is showing us. Sometimes I think we, we have to focus on what we can see, not the evidence of things not seen, but at the evidence of what you're showing me, God. See, you got to catch this because if you see it and you put your minds on it and you draw it in, see, this is, this is, the three clap and rub it together and then see it in your mind, your spiritual. Because what I was talking to my wife about, it, she asked me, she said, what you talking about? And I said, I just thought about talking body, mind, soul. It still fits because of my body, which is the temple. It's pure and I, and I get as healthy as possible. And I choose life and I choose things that will make me be better physically. And I know my mind is made up to serve the Lord because he is the head of my life and, and my focus. Then what can my soul embody? What, how much can the anointing of God that he wants to add? Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you go down to the seventh first. And all that I see was the five and six that I was focused on. But then you go down to seven. I've just been reading way, way, way more than and getting into different scriptures. Okay, what about this? And look at that study Bible and looking at my grandfather's Bible and all these little underlying marks under certain things and going back and reading and see, okay, well, what, what was he thinking? And then my, and then in the same Bible, there's there's highlighter markers from when my dad was making his notes, and I was just reading through it. I finally opened the box. I wanted I wanted to be at the church, so you know, we can it can be there. But I had to open. I couldn't hold the box no more. Thank you, Jesus. And it said, uh, "In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths." I see. I said earlier. Sometimes we can be going along. And 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 see see the path God wants us to go, and we get to can look off and, and just looking down, following following the path, and thinking we're going in a direction. But truly, we have to focus on the path and what God is wanting to do and say through us on the path towards glory. Can somebody say on the path towards glory? <laughs> yeah, and B. See, this is the thing. I can't always look. This is why I was saying about seeing. Instead of saying, well, the Lord hasn't showed it to me yet, and I don't know the way, and I, I'm working on a plan, but I haven't felt to share it yet, and I got to open these lips of clay and allow him to speak through what he wants to say. My spirit, man, listen to this. Do not be wise 
in thine own eyes. This is wisdom. This is what I'm saying. So we have to see the spirit of what God, the spirit eye, and that's why I say draw it in. But if we if we cannot, listen, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. <laughs> this is the thing. If we If we don't allow the evil or the negativity, we'll say, that comes in to get us off from really focusing in and seeing through our spiritual eye and seeing the thing and speaking life into it or speaking directly to it, to whatever it is. And we do this, but if we put it into practice, then our resurrected anointing, our, our, our rejuvenation into a greater experience, the greater good of what God is wanting to do through us, for us, <laughs> man, Man, I love it. I love this right now because it allows us time to think about what it is we're thinking about, seeing it, believing it, and then manifesting it. Somebody say, whoa, manifesting. Yeah. By this point, the power and everything that God has brought us through, I'll say us, because me too, I'm speaking to it. I'm, I just gave two or three examples to begin. God is manifesting things in such a way that if we put our spiritual mind on it and he gave us the power to speak it into existence, then why not be a master manifester at seeing what God is capable of doing and accepting it? See, the thing about accepting your power and moving in it is that it will allow your anointing to become a greater substance to what can become greater through the words and what God has shown us. And through that, you can wear all you can wear all kind of things that to to make it look a certain way, but God truly knows the heart of man, the heart of us, and what we're capable of doing. Hallelujah! He's been so good, and it will become greater. It will become a greater good. Thank you, Jesus, man. Let me let me get over here. I don't want to. I, I do I do want to because it, it, it something is you know as the shift happens and as we we get a greater understanding of what we're what the resurrected anointing that works through us and works for us is capable of doing accomplishing somebody say I will become I am a master manifester <laughs> what somebody say what yeah pray on it try God at your try Try the Lord and, and ask him to give you the words to speak on something this week and test test your test your ability and the faith and the substance that you walk in. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Speak Amen. it. Say it. Try God. I am a master manifester. Yes. I am a master manifester. Yeah. Because I walk yeah. with the power of the one that 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 <laughs> that we just heard the story of raising. He got raised from the dead by the power that was given unto him to speak life into his friend and speak life in so many said to to wipe the man's eye with the clay and oh yes opened unto the son of man come on man do we have an example of what he's capable of doing so why if we have the power that 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 that, that we walk with and talk with and that comes through us are we not using the gift of the Holy Ghost that lives in us yes, to sir. speak life into what seems like or could could take us off. Because it, I am we know how when we, sometimes we get bad news, it's hard not to take it personally. I'm 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 not a far from that. I'm still healing from certain things that you can imagine. But guess what? When my friend called me I, for a moment, I was like, oh no, man. But then I had I was like, wait a minute. No, man, I can't, I can't go there. I can't accept that. I didn't want to accept it. I'm like, nah, man, come on, bro. Like, I haven't talked to you in this long. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I, that's what we're calling each other. Like, I had, wait a minute. I can't, I can't buy into that. I'm not believing that. No, bro. I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask the church to pray, bro. We're going to call God and say, we need, we need this. <laughs> like, seriously, we need this. We need you. We need to see that you are still, we, we need a, a representation that miracles, the miraculous happens for those who are miraculous or who have been made and, and wonderfully and fearfully made 
I can hear his soul, and he's your great, big, wonderful God. I wish I could, I wish I could, whoa. pastor would say we are both human and divine we have to overcome the flesh so our divinity can walk in the earth think about that I had conversations with her about that can you imagine we're both human and divine but allowing our divineness to rise up in a way to where it just it just permeates every atmosphere every room that we grace that's allowed to even be around us. That's how great God is in us. I believe that's why the name greater light means so much and meant so much because if we become greater in him and him in us, then what to the world do we become? Think about that. What to our immediate surroundings, our family members do we become if we allow that grace to grace them? Or if we allow that, the, the, the permeating power of his presence, the permeating power of his presence to ooze through us and keep that consistent flow. See, I could have easily been like, oh, man, my boy's out of here, man. Dad. But I couldn't accept that. We can't accept those type of things in life. That's why we got to choose life. The son of man lives in us. God lives in us. The Holy Ghost works through us. Come on now. Come on, I'm going to be out your way in a minute. I'm just so excited about this today. You just, you just have no idea how happy I am tonight because God's grace lives. God's grace lives and it's new every day. We get a new grace and a new chance for his mercy. I don't know how many people would choose to not do the will of God. I don't suggest it because out of that, he can do so much. I pray for, for some of the people that, that I come across. I came across the guy the other day. He was walking past my gate and some said, acknowledge him. And I just, I, I acknowledge him saints. And all I do is just kind of give him what's up. <laughs> he came over, he said, I said, how you doing, brother? I didn't even open the gate because with everything, school shootings at the Presbyterian Church down south, you know, it's really high protocol right now to be very, you know, vigilant. And I see, I said, how you doing, brother? He said, well, man, he said it was cold out too. It's been cold in California like you can't imagine. He said, man, you think I could get a cup of coffee? I said, yeah. I said, you want a black? He said, yeah. I said, all right. Went to the little break room, made him a cup of coffee, and went out there. And see, I didn't know whether he was in, in the person of uh, looking like a homeless person or he's the angel of God. But I went, I, I brought him a couple sugars, Pastor Harris. And yeah, I brought him a stir stick. And when they had some cookies in there, I brought him some cookies and a couple little cutie oranges. And I handed it to him. I said, man, here you go. He was so thankful. You understand? So God will use anything to give you an example of, of the opulence, as I was mentioning earlier. The objectivity of some people would be to just mistreat the man. I don't know where he's, he's at or what he's experienced to get him to there. And maybe he's there to see who would be a blessing to him. And maybe God's using him to see if 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 if, if I haven't, or we we have, I, I'll just say me, if I haven't been so exalted in some way to not acknowledge the man, he could be a man of God and have a blessing for me. <laughs> and he did. He had a little hoodie on, man. It was cold. He was like, you know. Well, I'm going to get to another example, too, a few weeks ago. Oh, man, I'm not done with that one. I, I said, man, I said, I got a hoodie. You want? I went to my car. I had a hoodie in my trunk. I wish I would have had some more stuff just tucked away. I'm going to go through mine and just keep. There's so many homeless people. I'm like, man. I may as well keep some stuff in there to give out. I gave a man, I went and got that that hoodie. You'd have thought it was a, a goose down bubble jacket with the fur around the top. He was so happy. But it was another layer. And it probably brought him some warmth. I know there's some good energy on it. He was so excited and so thankful. And I felt gratitude in my heart because I was able to do something for him. Even in that, 
the power of God had an opportunity to show me that it don't matter. Because if you don't forget one of the least of his little ones, then he will acknowledge you and bless you. This is the thing. We can't take people at face value. We have to walk with an, an acknowledgement, too, for the people in the world. So guess what? We can be a blessing. <laughs> we can be a blessing to them. <laughs> Why not? It only allows us to get, have some gratitude. I once said, uh, having gratitude is so much more than saying I love or thank you. His love is true, unconditional. It already shines inside you. Ignite the flame inside you. Light it up. Let glory shine within you. Ignite the flame inside you. Light it. Let it shine, shine, shine. And those type of things allow a lot of glory to God to come in and shine. And I was shine, over here. Lord, shine. shine. Come on. First Chronicles 29, verse 11. Oh, man. These things. Thine, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. <laughs> Listen, let me read that again. <laughs> Thine, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. So it's already his. It wasn't my hoodie. <laughs> thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art, ex what does it say? Exalted as the head above all. So if I don't allow him to lead me, if I don't lie, if I become a sojourner and, 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 and turn it off and on, it's not an off and on switch because it's a continuous thing. Because I don't want to have a temporary thing because if I don't keep it flowing, this is the point. If I don't keep it flowing, then I could be looked at as a sojourner or as a temporary Christian. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to become that. I don't want to become lackadaisical in, in the pursuit of, of glory and happiness in God and become a, a temporary Christian. Turn it off and on, hot and cold, hot and cold. You got to wait for it to warm up. I grew up my, my I grew up my dad had old cars. He had a Cadillac he used to keep plugged in. I think it was like a a a, a 76 Coupe de Ville. It was yellow. And we used to drive it to church every Sunday. <laughs> he even had a name of it before. And you guys uh Elder Hackett, we used to drive that dog to church a couple of times. He jumped a couple of railroad tracks and it was fun. But guess what? He had to keep it plugged in, connected cuz it was so cold in the winter time. He had to keep it plugged in so it would actually the battery wouldn't get decelled and, and not charge up and then keep the car warm. Basically, keep the engine from the freeze plug from getting too. Come on, man. There's a source to everything. If you need the sustainability or to to uh, keep things. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Keep it warmed up so it won't freeze and the freeze plug won't pop out. and We won't have no way to get to church besides calling somebody else. See, it wasn't a temporary thing. He was focused Saturday night on getting there Sunday morning. See what I'm saying? So it's a continuous connection that we need sometimes, no matter what we're going through experience to make sure that we have what we need to get to where we're going. And that's heaven. Ooh, come on, somebody. Stay connected. That's absolutely right. Yes, stay connected. It's not a sojourner. I don't want to become a sojourner. I want to hashtag don't become a sojourner because it's a fanning to sleep. It's happening ever since ever since the, uh, the situation that causes us to have to be uh, even on this platform. Or and thank God for it, but we can't allow ourselves to become sojourners. And it says down here, <laughs> let me read the this uh, this thine O Lord is the greatness and the power, the greatness and the power, and the glory. Everything we've been talking about and the victory. We've been we heard three different examples of glory, and I'm sure somebody on here has has something that happened this week. God showed up or it showed up and it found you and it's glorious. It's, it's a victorious thing that happened. It's a new experience. It never happened like this. Before. I know three or four people on here got something like that. And if you don't put your mind towards something great happening for you and, and, and something victorious coming into your life, come on, somebody. I am victorious because the majesty, the one who gives majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth 
is thine. And he gives it all, all three of those, four of those, those things, the greatness, the power, the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as the head above all. So what can I go to him and say, look, okay, you have a meeting with the Lord. You say, hey, Lord, I was just, I was just wondering. <laughs> he already knows the thought. That's the thing. So that's why they say as a man thinking, so is he. So if I'm not focused on the on the majesty, on the uh, <laughs> on the the glory, if I'm not focused on the power of God and becoming the greatness of the example of God and what He wants to do for the people of God, then I'm just wasting time. I'm as we be marking time, as Bishop say. He said, "When I was in the service, sometimes we be marking time. We be and, and we wouldn't be going nowhere. We just marking time. They would have us just stomping in one position, just stand there, marking time." I don't want to just be standing still. I want to be moving forward. I want to be looking towards, towards the heavens so God can say, okay, I see you focused. I see, I got something for you now. You ready now? He can see that I'm ready. I'm so focused. My eyes are set as a flint unto the, the heavens and the giver of life that gives me breath to even speak the words that are coming out of my mouth. I, I, I want to get a greater understanding and walk with him and with more power and more greatness. Oh man, I just thank the Lord tonight. Don't become a sore journey. Because you don't want to become a stranger before God. This is how I took it in the verse 15. When it says, for we are strangers before thee and sojourners as we all, as we're all our fathers, our days on the earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding. How can I not abide if I if I know the Lord? This is the thing I wanted to put out, even to myself. If I if I grew up, and a child is not if he's grown up with the knowledge of Christ, or even if you came later on in life and you have the knowledge of Christ, how can you not give reverence to what you are learning, or what you have learned, or what you have taught, were taught, and what new new Christian what they're learning? from those of us that come before to give example and speak life into life. I don't want to become a sojourner outside of the will of God. I promise you that. <laughs> I want to stay closer to the greatness. I want to stay closer to the power. I want God to use me and feel that I am able to accomplish what it is he wants and has set before us to accomplish. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Lord, just, just drop that in my heart tonight. Because I don't want to become a stranger, like it says. And I don't want to become a sort of, and before the we are in sojourners. And I don't think, you know, people that came before us, like it says in that verse, I just took it as, nah, he didn't want to sojourner. He was a faithful. My mom was faithful. Pastor Hackett was faithful. <laughs> I got a picture I should share to, to the church, you know, but she's here on vacation, laying in the bed. I told Pastor Harris about it on one of our conversations. She was laying in the bed with the Bible open and her phone book open. And it's just a great example. It never stopped. And it still doesn't stop because as, as, as the ones who become the children of the resurrection or the resurrected one, they become angels and can never die. So the spirit lives on. To be absent from the body is to be present with God in the spirit. So, the, I mean, so many things we could talk about tonight. But I'm going to wrap up so we can have some responses and, and, and see what, what we think about not becoming sojourners or lackadaisical in our search for the greatness and the victory. And I don't want my sons to not have a reverence for God based, based on me falling off or not being a good example to what it means to be Christ-like. I want more. I want God to shine more. I want his words to be prevalent. Like, so I'm seeking persistence towards the, the power of his presence. I'm being persistent. I'm persevering so I can conquer the greatness that God wants. I'm going to go through it. Hasn't been an easy couple of weeks. We, we, you know, 
kind of, you know, going through a couple of things. But guess what? If I don't keep my eyes set and use what I use the power I got, I can fall off and be like, oh man, oh man, there ain't no pity party in God because my praise is greater than the pity. <laughs> Somebody said, what? My praise is better than a pity party. God ain't pity party. And he's He's a living, true, wonderful, great, big, wonderful God. So if he's great and he makes me great and he's big in me, then what does that make, make us? If he's not, let me say that right, because I don't like to say me. If he's great in us and he sees us, then what will he add to us? Us, we, and ours. No, I, me, and my, even though it's about somebody said, well, it's about me. <laughs> I love you, but please hear what I'm saying clearly. Be precise. No pity party. That's right. Ain't no pity party. Your God is greater than having pity on no party and, and just accepting anything. Like I said, I could have accepted my friend and all the bad news, my you know, nephew getting shot up or, you know, the, the whole thing, like all kind of different experiences. But I had to focus. Let's come back to the focus. And guess what I started to do? I started flooding myself with more water. Guess what? So I can be in a flow. Somebody said, what do you mean? I'm drinking more water. I'm seeking a greater anointing, which comes through even, I even been uh, going to the water a little bit more and casting things out into the deep. Somebody said, how do you do that? You go to the Alki, you go somewhere where there's deep water and you just say, Lord, take just give it to God. Throw it in the water. I can't believe that. But all right. I don't know who that was for, but please catch it. Stop just drinking water. Somebody said, well, I don't like water by itself, man. Get a sugar-free uh, sweetener, but just keep flushing. And then go to the water and stop stop carrying certain things. I don't know why. Well, I feel this so heavy. But go to the water and leave, leave I feel to say, leave it in the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. Cast it out into the sea of forgetfulness and cast it out into the deep. It's not for you to carry. I don't know who this is for. In the name of God, whoever this is for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you were great in God, with God, and for God. You don't need to be carrying it around. Look towards the greatness and the victorious things to be your testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Take yourself to the water, whoever this is for. And cast those things that you've been think overthinking about or or carrying around. <laughs> and this that I did it, and if I practice it, I'm just I'm led to tell you right now: go to the water and cast it to the deep, or just go there and just breathe. Remember how Pastor used to say, "Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in," and then when you breathe out, say, "Jeez." Yes. It's that type of anointing. Jesus, and when you think about that, let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. So, so that you don't carry it around. Going to the water could be a filter instead of some of those things that just clean it out. Just clean it out. Get it out. Just get it out and leave it there. When you turn away from that water, and I believe somebody's going to exercise this exercise. When you turn away from that water, you turn around three times and then walk towards your direction to wherever your car is or wherever you headed, whether you walk up to the water, turn around three times, just like that three cracks. 
Mm. Focus in, bring it in, bring it into your spirit mind. And when you get ready to, to, when you feel like you're done and you leave and you cast those cares into the deep, you turn around three times and walk the direction that God tells you to go. Whether it's to your car, you walk down the boardwalk, wherever it is, Redondo, wherever, wherever you, you're led to go. But I know somebody's going to do it. And you exercise that exercise and you testify to how you feel after that and just start taking more water in and flush, flush your system and get closer to God. And as you begin to purify your temple, the body, then guess what? Your mind will become clear and your soul will be able to live body more power based on those, those two things. I can't believe that's coming around like that. Because I told my wife, I thought about talking, like I said, I told Sister Mel, I said, I said, I'm thinking about talking about the body, the mind, and the soul. Maybe we, you know, we could chop that up around around the table, around them, you know, somebody put that in their in their notes and, and see what comes out of that. You know, the body, the mind, and the soul. Because if, if Jesus would have would have not been in a place for his body to go through what he went through for us. And his mind wasn't focused on what God was asking him to do as an example for us. Then his soul wouldn't have had the power to raise, he wouldn't have been able to accept, accept the, what, how much power it took to, to resurrect it, to be resurrected. Come on now, I'm just gonna say it again. Somebody needs to go to the water and clear out, leave it in the sea of forgetfulness. And don't think about it ever again. Even if you have a pain in your body, just, just reach, do the little three clap, rub your hands together and focus on it. And then touch yourself there, wherever it is. And just say, Lord, by your stripes, I'm healed. Yes. Because you said so. And I can ask without any hesitation. This, that's the part. That's the part. Sometimes we hesitate to think we could just, I got a headache. Do I need some coffee or caffeine to get rid of it? No, I might just need to grab myself and say, Lord, take this away. Lord, bless it. Could you just go away? But I say, I get migraines all the time. How come you didn't tell me that before? No, you have the power. And by his stripes, we're healed. Come on. I'm going to be out the way. There was only one thing I, I, I want to say. Seek the things of God that will add to you in this time. Don't matter what the world's doing. It doesn't matter how many rumors of wars going around and how many peace treaties are being, uh, you know, talked about without being talked about, and all the different things that are happening in biblical uh, uh, revelation or, or that are being revealed that come from the Bible or that has been spoken of as prophecy that will be the, the reflection of what we need to, to recognize as the end times. If we are the church of the Latter-day Saints, the church that's gonna be the example for these later days, then guess what? We have to be victorious to be able to handle what God wants to add. We have to think that way. We are victorious. I am the glory of God. And I have this song that, that, that I spoke about. And I, and I know it's, I, I, I didn't even, I didn't even look at the clock. I'm sorry. It's, it's, oh, wow. <laughs> I was supposed to stop about 24 minutes ago, 20, but I, I, I appreciate the flow that came from hey, Go for it, go for it, go for it. I appreciate it and needed that. Uh, the song that has been on my heart, you know, without technical difficulties, can't say what happened. But this this has been on my heart. I will sing this song, I'll be out the way. Now, I know there's a lot of prayer requests, or probably prayer requests. We do a corporate prayer, have a little response after this, and then do a corporate prayer. Everybody knows in their mind what they want to ask for. So just ask for it. And through this song, hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. I pray it'll be a blessing to you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you receive something to that would be a blessing to you and that will help edify your temple and the spirit of God that lives in you 
to know that you have the power of the resurrected one living in you and you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Allow the power that you walk with to work with, work for you. Speak the words, hallelujah. But this is one of the reasons, one of the reasons through a song, as we spoke of earlier, I will sing a hymn unto you to rejoice in knowing that you are the true and living God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future, my life is worth the living just because he lives. I'll sing it one more time. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because I know oh, who holds my future, my life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives. <laughs> oh man, because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, because he lives, because he lives, I can face. Tomorrow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all my fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future, my life is worth the living just because he lives. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome word. Thank you, Lord. God, powerful, powerful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You worthy, Lord. You worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Elder Harris, are you still there? There you are. Praise the Lord, saints. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We have eternal hope because he got up. It all rests in him. You know, there are so many powerful points that Pastor brought out this evening. 
but I think the main focus is that we need to seek God, the things of God that will increase our faith. There's so much that's going on in the world today that it's easy to become discouraged, easy to, to give up hope, yeah. as we see so often every day in the lives of many people. But, you know, I, I, I heard a message the other day talking about that very thing is that, you know, that's just the trick of the enemy yeah. is to discourage the saints that's right. to make you lose hope. But we have to have the spirit of David to encourage ourselves in the things of the Lord. And to remember, even as pastor gave us the scripture, I believe in Psalms 28, that everything is the Lord's and the fullness of it is his. And remember who's in charge. It's the Lord. He hasn't lost control. We're in his hands. But we thank God for the word. I thank God for using our pastor tonight to break the bread of life, to feed the sheep. I just want to just lift him up in prayer right now. Father God, we just want to just lift up our pastor before you tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for using him to bring forth the message tonight, Lord. Help us not to lose focus of you, not to get caught up in the things of this world, but to keep our eyes upon the the Savior, the prize, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for each and every person who is on the service here tonight. We lift up our pastor, ask, Lord, that you will continue to touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Build a hedge round about him and his entire family, Father God. Continue to pour into him that he may not be able to pour out and feed the sheep, I pray. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in his life. We ask that you will continue to do it in a, even a greater way, Lord, that as he spoke tonight, it would manifest and bring forth much more. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for what you have done here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We thank God for using you, Pastor. Wish yeah, there was more time, but you know, God, God knows, as your mom says, you know, yeah. God knows many a services have yeah. went that direction where God just took over. And but we thank you for what God used you to deliver. But we're gonna take the few remaining minutes and take our prayer requests, as Pastor suggested. You know, uh the ones that that stand out to you, uh, we'll make mention of them, and then we'll do a corporate prayer at the end, all right?